Good afternoon. Today is the 18th of April. It's a very sunny day. There's lots of uh, background noise. I don't know if you can hear it or not. If you can't, that's great. Um, but I'm excited to talk today about another ITC series. Um, this time we're going to look at Danger Man, although for reasons I'll get into in, in a moment, this might be part one of two. So Danger Man was broadcast from 1960 to 1961, and then again from 1964 to 1967. It was um, made from 1959-1960 and from 1964 to 1966. It was uh, an ITC production, um, starred Patrick McGowan, who later went on to make The Prisoner as um, a secret agent. In fact, the title in America for the second series of Danger Man was actually Secret Agent. Earlier on um, in the, the um, what are called the half hour Danger Man episodes, which were the first ones made in about 1960. He worked for um, NATO, but later from 1964 onwards, he worked for a fictional British government department called M9. Um, the superiors didn't particularly um, have any sort of consistency, um, but it was an interesting um, sort of setup nevertheless. And quite early on in the sort of later Danger Man episodes, what are called the hour long ones, because um, there were actually two, two and a half series of uh, those uh, later ones. Um, he switched from using an American accent to a British accent. It's all very strange. Danger Man is a very good series. The ones that are half an hour long, um, they feel a bit rushed. There's not enough time to really develop um, the plot and the characters. Um, the ones that are an hour long are better and they have more money and they seem to have um, just taken more care about it. Um, they were produced, um, I thought the later ones, by a lady called Ada Young, who was one of the first female producers in the country, along with uh, Verity Lambert, who I've already talked about, who was the producer of the early Doctor Who episodes. Um, and they were made at um, what was called MGM um, Boreham Wood Studios, um, which were the same studios for The Prisoner and 2001 A Space Odyssey, although they were demolished in 1970. Um, the later hour-long episode of Danger Man were made um, at Shepperton Studios for reasons I don't really understand. Um, but um, uh, they ended up leaving Borenwood halfway through the production run and I can't remember why. There's a booklet for that that uh, TV historian Andrew Pixley has uh, produced that you can look up about that sort of stuff if you're interested. Is it worth watching Danger Man these days? Well, I think so. Um, Patrick McGowan is just as intense as he is in The Prisoner. And um, there are three episodes um, that sort of inspired The Prisoner and leave people to believe that um, John Bre Drake is the same character as in um, The Prisoner number six, most notably an episode called Colony Three, which was um, filmed in August 1964. Um, that's one of the best episodes of Danger Man, actually, if you can track that one down. Um, the half hour episodes are a bit more specialist. Um, the music's not as good. Um, Edwin Astley, who was the composer for masses of ITC series, including The Saint, wrote the music for Danger Man. Um, and it, it's good, but I, I think they hit their stride later on with this hour long format. One of the reasons why I can't do a complete um, episode on Danger Man today is because I don't have enough information about the hour-long Danger Man episodes to talk about all the cars in them. Now, I have seen all the hour-long Danger Man episodes, but um, I haven't got information online to easily access about all of them. So I mean, I'm going to have to watch all of them again and write down all the cars I used in them, which would probably just take me too long. It sounds like a fun thing to do. I mean, I'd love, I love watching things like Danger Man. Um, so we're going to have to focus on the first series, um, the half hour ones, which were, produ were produced from 1959 to 1960 and broadcast from 60 to 61. In the very first episode of Danger Man, 
um, that was called A View from the Villa was actually coincidentally filmed at Port Merion in 1959. Um, he has, uh, that's John Jake, John Drake has an Aston Martin DB Mark III, not a DB3, a DB Mark III, um, which is interesting. He also uses another Aston Martin in episode eight. Uh, no, sorry, that's episode five. I'm going to do apologize. Episode five, he uses an Aston Martin DB24, which is a 54 model. Um, they think the DB Mark III was a brand new one, so it'd be a 58, 59, something like that. One of the most interesting cars used in these half hour Danger Man episodes was a 1955, what's called a Parson MG Weld and Grind Special, which was a one off car. Um, it doesn't appear anywhere else, as far as I know, on the internet. Um, but somebody managed to track it down, which is amazing. That's in episode eight if you want to have a look at it. It's a sort of racing car modified for the road and um, was unique. Um, John Drake also has an Austin Healey 3000 um, Mark One. It's not the same one used. Um, in H she was a visible man. Um, it definitely isn't because I've I've checked it's different, they're different colours. Uh, it's after 28. There's also a Borgfart Isabella, which is a you know a very sort of well-known car from the 50s, although Borgfart disappeared in 61. That's in episodes 2, 11, 25, and 37. Also in episode 25, um, John Drake drives a Jaguar XK140. He didn't really have a regular car in the series. He did have a Mercedes 190SL, I think, in the title sequence for the first series. Um, but he doesn't really have a regular car. That comes later. Um, there's also some Alpine Series 1 in episode 12. It's sort of similar to the one that used in Doctor No. And um, in uh, episode 9, called The Sanctuary, which is one of the best episodes of the first series, I'd say, um, there's a lovely um, Series 1 um, Land Rover, 80-inch wheelbase from 51, that was also used in a Agatha Christie Marple film called Murder at the Gallop. And there's a 1944 Morris commercial C8GS as well. I don't really talk about trucks, but that one I remember particularly, it's being uh, interesting. So um, the scant information that I do have, just so I don't, don't get it wrong, I mean, I can speculate and do half remembered things, um, but I think it's best if I just talk about the information I do have. Um, the video that I released um, yesterday, I think only it was, gosh, it was only yesterday, I've <laughs> done quite a few this week, um, about the, the Mini Cooper S um, used in the Saint, that was the same Mini that John Drake drove in the hour-long episode of Danger Man. Um, 731 HOP, a 63 Austin Mini Cooper um, 1071S. And that was supplied by BMC themselves. It's a Birmingham plate and it's pretty easy to work out from that. Um, that, um, yeah, that was supplied by BMC, who were the manufacturer. The other interesting car that's used in Danger Man from the research I've, I've got available to me now is a 1955 Saab 92P Deluxe. Now this particular car was imported um, into um, Britain in 1964. And uh, I think the episode's called The Professionals that they use it in. Not the professionals in the series, but the episode is called The Professionals. Um, I could be wrong about that, but um, it's episode 19 of, of the Owl on Danger Man series anyway. Um, that Saab has a fake plate in the episode, but was actually registered LFF247 and after being restored in 1994, um, it actually appeared um, on Top Gear in the 90s and appeared in Top Gear again in about 2012 when they did, did a um, sort of review of, of Saab as an automaker when they'd gone bankrupt. Um, and uh, it's interesting to see that <laughs> that car is using a lot of stuff over a period of you know many, many years. So I hope you found that video interesting. Um, Sorry, I can't do a complete analysis of all the cars in Danger Man. We'll have to wait for the second part another time when I've got more information to hand. Um, but I hope you found it useful anyway. Um, don't forget to leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like this video. Um, my website is www.lloydvehicleconsulting.co.uk. My Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. If you wish me to source a car feed, there's nothing to be anything that I've mentioned so far. Um, then please do um, get in touch via the Contact Me page on my website. I'd love to do that for any of you who are out there. Thank you very much indeed again for watching.